American solidarity on full display at yesterday's March for Israel in D.C. U.S. flags waving alongside Israeli flags, a message of unity to our greatest ally in the Middle East. Fox and Friends weekend co-host Pete Hegseth joins us now. Pete, when you look at the you looked Good at morning. the sea of individuals, hundreds of thousands. I think they were expecting 60,000 originally. Then we heard numbers of like 100,000, but it ended up being so much more. Yeah, two, 300,000 people uh, on the National Mall yesterday. And I was struck by, you mentioned it, the solidarity of it, uh, the silent majority, how people came out peacefully and waved not just Israeli flags, but American flags. I mean, when you look out into the audience, you see, you see both in the hands of many people. And you contrast that with the violent pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas protests, where there certainly is not an American flag to be found. And if there is, it's probably being burned. Uh, so the contrast of these these audiences and what they believe, what they focus on, what they hold up, uh, it's, it's f the one free beacon in the Middle East in the largest, most powerful free country in the world, uh, marching peacefully with a bipartisan uh, group of speakers at the front. Uh, I, th that represents sort of there might be young people, there are misguided people, there are a lot of people out there who have been taught the wrong thing about the Middle East, uh, but the majority of Americans support the state of Israel in their righteous fight against Hamas, and you saw it yesterday. When you uh, look at what else is happening, you see how the pushback at NYU, these, uh, the Jewish students are suing the school. At Columbia University, they've banned two Palestinian groups. Uh, there's been pushback in other schools. Do you think we're getting our emotional feet on this, uh, getting back on our feet on this, and you think there's going to be, this could be the beginning of some pro-Israeli pushback? Maybe a little bit. Uh, we're, we're filming right now for a Fox Nation special about some of these Ivy League schools, these elite schools, after October 7th and how donors and board members are revolting and taking a stand, which should lead to a change in the classroom. But the more you dig underneath it, you realize how big and powerful these systems are. They're on autopilot. The types of students they're bringing in, um, the curriculum being taught in the classroom. So if in some ways you see... I don't want to say the last gasp, but you see a fight back that is fighting an inevitable wave of leftism and Islamist apology, uh, apologists for Islamists on campus. It doesn't have any sign of stopping. Like, this is what kids are being taught in alternate history of the Middle East. So it's good to see there might be some consequences, some sanity will return. But is it an overarching trend of our colleges and universities? I don't think so, unfortunately. So, Pete, I know that we're all flying down to Nashville to join you for the fifth annual Patriot Awards. It's tomorrow at the Grand Ole Opry. Tell us about it. It's tomorrow. The stage looks great, guys. Tomorrow morning, Fox and Friends will be hosting from that very stage at the Grand Ole Opry House. I've seen the set. I know who's getting uh, awards this year, and it's phenomenal. Uh, it's just an amazing group of Americans celebrating our country. You know, they weren't looking for the spotlight, but tomorrow night the spotlight will find them at the stage of the fifth annual, five mm -hmm. years, guys, uh, Patriot Awards in Nashville, Tennessee. Can't wait to see you and all the great um, Patriots that are going to be out there tomorrow night. You can watch it all on Fox Nation. And hopefully we'll, you'll be joining us live in the crowd, too. It is a tradition that the cameras follow you as you go and rent a tux every year. Uh, and you get measured. You're going to be wearing a tux. You're going to be all laid out. Do you ever think about buying the tux by this point? Because you, you are hosting every year. No. It's how I get a free tux every year, Brian. I mean, come on, get with the system here. Uh -huh. This is how it goes. You, make, <laughs> you mix it up a little bit every year. Uh, but it's a heck of a show. Yes, uh, they've been following job. me around for three days. I'm a little sick of that. And um, I'm ready for the show to begin. Brian, I see that pocket square you've got there. You're ready it's to from go. You. you better bring that tomorrow night. It's from you, um, absolutely. I'm traveling. And for you to pick us up at the airport, I said that was way over the top. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I have that Uber app. It's my hometown. It's my hometown. <laughs> uh, it's this is hometown it. service, Brian. How does it feel? You fly up here every weekend. You fly up here a lot during the week. Now we're coming to you. Yeah, for once you come to me. Yes. And my house is open, got a guest house. Well, whatever you guys need, milk's in the fridge. Right, you make yourself at home. That's right. It's 1971. We're drinking milk, right? He has Fantastic. it delivered. That's oh, we drink milk <laughs> All right, every good. day, Brian. You drink come milk. on. Okay, we'll make that little mustache. All right, uh, Pete, we'll see you in person at the Grand Old Opry. Yep, we're flying out after the <laughs> show. We'll see you soon.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.